Hello everyone, this is Zach with the first ever screencast. It's going to be a lot of fun. Today, uh, seeing as my inquiry topic is looking at data in our world, we're going to learn how to calculate the line of best fit on our calculators using some data that I generated. So, to get started, we're going to work with generating the data. You can see my mouse here, follow along. Any bu button that I press will light up red. So if you didn't see which one I pressed, the red button is the last one that I pressed. So we're going to start first, hit the stat button. Like that. Here we have a list that comes up. We're actually going to go to this edit one right here. Hit enter. <laughs> now here's our table of values. Um, like I said, I already have some values generated, so we're just going to plug them in here. So this is going to be, L1's going to be our X column. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Just like that. All right. Then we're going to go to the next column over here. And I'm going to plug in the values that I generated here. Let's go one, one, three, six, seven. Nine. All right, so here's our data points, our X's over here and our Y's right here. Now these are pretty random points, but for the purpose of this lesson, we're just going to kind of act like um, it's some data that we found in the world, just so it makes, um, makes everything a little bit easier for us. So next we're going to look at what it's like in the graph. We're going to head over to this button over here, the Y equals, and press that. And to make sure we can see our data points, we're going to turn this plot one on here. So we're going to go up, hit enter, and there's our data plot is on. We're going to head over to the window button right here, hit window. And we know all of our values are positive, so we're going to change our window so we can just get a better look at our data here. So we're going to make that zero. We're going to up this to 15. Don't worry about the X scale. Y minimum will have zero, and we'll have X max at 15, just to make everything look nice and neat. So next, we're going to hit the trace button right here. Hit the trace, and there's all of our data values right there. If you hit the over arrow key, you can kind of see what X equals 2, Y equals 1. We can go see all of our values here, right on the graph. So here's our values. And now we're going to figure out a line of best fit to hopefully fit this data and see how well these, these values are correlated. So to start, we're going to go back to that stat button over here. Hit the stat, but instead of the edit, we're actually going to move our cursor over to calc right here. We're going to go down to number four right there. It says linreg lin ax plus b. Just like that. Press enter. So this is going to give us our linear regression, our line of best fit. So our X list, like we said, was L1. You can just leave that right there if it still says L1. Y list, same thing. L2. If you need to change any of those, you can hit the second button and then hit list. And then you can put in the right one that you need to. But ours are good. You can go second. We'll get back to that. Oop. Wrong one. All right, back to here. So we have our L1, L2. We don't need to worry about the frequency list, but we do want to work on the store regression equation. So we're actually going to hit this bars button right here, right by the arrow keys, hit bars. We're going to go over to Y bars. We're going to press enter on function and enter on Y1. And I'll show you guys what that does in a couple a minute or so here. So we're going to calculate. And there it is. There's our line of best fit. Um, so normally, a lot of you are probably familiar with Y equals MX plus B. Same equation, just instead of M being the slope, it's labeled as A. So our slope for this line is 1.743 approximately. And our B 
is giving it y, y equals negative 1.6. So you have our line best fit, but let's see how it works in the data. So first I'm going to show you, hit over that y equals button again. And when we did that whole, you know, put the y1 variable in, that just tells the calculator we're going to store the equation that we get in the y1 slot, which I think is pretty cool. So we're going to go back over to trace. When we trace it, you can see this line starts coming up. That's our line of best fit right there. And you kind of see it doesn't go through the data points, but it kind of, you know, goes by some of them um, along there. So if you hit this up arrow, there's a line right there. You can go up and down the line as you need to. Just like that. So the line of best fit is just saying like if this if this data was you know all on a line like where would that line be you know how would that how would we use that so for instance if I put in if I just put in one x equals one our y comes out to be point one four three approximately now we know the data we put in was one but you know what we're gonna what we're gonna talk about next is if we're extrapolating data. So let's say we have this line of best fit and we're looking for a trend. Now you can kind of see how all these data points are pretty close to this line, which is, which is good. That's what we want. Um, we want all the data points to be close because then we know they're probably highly correlated, that it's showing some trend in the graph. And this can work if it's, if it's going upward like that, or even if it was sloping downward like that. As long as the points are close to the, are close to the graph. Uh, are close to the data points that we have, that's a good sign. If we had like a horizontal line going along here, that would be, that would not be good. That means our data points are all over the place and everything's just not correlated. So let's say we want to figure out what x, x equals 10 is and we don't have that data point, but we can use our line to see, you know, what point might work best. So I'm going to type in 10 here. I'm going to put in enter. And so oh, looks like it's even above our graph there. Maybe just look at eight. There we go. So it's saying using this trend, using this line, at whatever value eight is, we're most likely going to get a value of 12. And so you can use that for plugging in data and figuring out, you know, looking ahead, like, is it correlated? Are all the data points kind of close to each other? And what might future data values give us? So that's all I have for you right now. Thanks for watching and, uh, you know, keep, keep looking at that data. Thanks.